What if I told you that every human has an equal value? Sounds pretty good, right? I mean, everyone should have equal rights, equal opportunities in life, equal access to fulfilling basic human needs like food and water. Stands to reason that every human should have an equal value, too. Well, if you agree with that, I'm sorry to say that I might have just sown the seed of Swedish progressive brainwashing in you. Let me explain. The term every human's equal value is a mistranslation of the first article of the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. Now, I'm explaining this because I believe it's important to understand in order to follow what I'm trying to say in this video. So please, bear with me here. The word dignity translates into sweet, the Swedish word värdighet, which translates back into dignity. Nothing is lost in translation. However, värdighet was shortened to värde, which, while very similar to värdighet, has a different meaning and translates back into English as value. Essentially, we Swedes lost our dignity to gain a sense of worth. Notice also that the term every human's equal value does not make mention of being born of equal value, but rather suggests that it is a constant. Article 1 of the UN Human Rights Declaration makes it clear that people are born free and equal in dignity and right for a reason. It suggests that actions taken during your life can either reinforce these rights for you or reduce your claim to them. A perfect example would be comparing a known and convicted murderer with a kindergarten teacher. The teacher has a stronger claim to their rights of freedom than the murderer, and rightly so. While this is commonly understood and accepted in Swedish society, the quote, all humans equal value, does not reflect this. So why is this important? Well, the quote has become sort of a standard for progressives in Sweden. We'll get to that shortly. I'd just like to say that the thought that every human has equal value without acknowledgement of the fact that this is just something that you are born with and it is your own responsibility whether this value is kept or lost can cause certain problems when dealing with certain people. The large influx of migrants is a good recent example. Sweden has had a very lax approach in regards to making sure that the people arriving in Sweden actually have good reasons to be here. It is my belief that Sweden's, what I would call almost obsession with the term every human's equal value is, at least in part, responsible for this. Since, if they have equal value to us, we have no reason to mistrust them. Ever. And I call it an almost obsession for a reason. Have a look at our political parties, for instance. From the Social Democrats policy page on the internet regarding their stance on anti-racism. The Social Democrats are an anti-racist party that strives for equality no matter a person's skin color, ethnicity, culture or religion. We Social Democrats stand for all humans equal value and would never tolerate racism or xenophobia. From the Moderates policy page regarding their stance on equality. Our politics begin with all humans equal value and all humans' rights to respect for their person and their integrity. From the Liberals' policy page regarding their stance on equality, every human has an equal value and the right to be a part of a society and form their own lives. From the Center Party's policy page on human rights, the human rights apply to all people. They state that we are all born free and have equal value and rights. But at least they acknowledge the born part. Good on you, Center. You almost used a decent translation there. From the Environmental Party's policy page regarding their stance on equality, human rights are founded on every human's equal value, regardless of sex. From the Left Party's Our Politics page, every human has equal value. From the Christian Democrats' policy section regarding their stance on equality, the foundation for the Christian Democrats' equality policy is every human's equal value. While we're here, though, I would like to show you something that I was not able to find anywhere else. This is the Christian Democrats' view of feminism. 
The Christian Democrats, as a political party, support full equality between men and women. There are many different kinds of feminism, and the word feminist has many different meanings. It worries us that today's growing feminist left wants to limit citizens' freedoms to advance their gender-theoretical visions. Good job, Sweden! You've managed to make me, who's been an atheist for most of my life, agree more with the religiously driven Christian Democrats than with the majority of Sweden's political parties, simply because they seem to be the only ones who are openly critical towards today's extremist feminism. So that didn't really have anything to do with the subject of this video, but I thought I'd have it in here anyway because... You know, credit where credit's due. And speaking of feminism, I could not find that exact quote on Feminist Initiative, the feminist political party of Sweden. I could not find it on their website. Now, there's only one major party left within Sweden, and that would be the Sweden Democrats. I could not actually find a mention of any of this on their website. In fact, they don't appear to have a dedicated equality, equality policy written on their site, nor can I find a reference to the UN Human Rights Declaration. As such, I cannot confidently make any statement regarding their stance on the matter. Now, I can understand if you feel like I'm harping on about this, but please, just hear me out here. The reason I feel this is particularly important is in how this one seemingly innocent phrase is being used in Sweden today, and how I believe it affects people and the way they think. I believe that by accepting the premise that every human has equal value, any person saying something that might challenge that assertion can themselves be justifiably viewed as being of lesser value. In Sweden today, we are told that anyone who questions immigration, or tries to shed light on the fact that alongside refugees, seeking asylum and refuge within our country, many less scrupulous individuals are taking advantage of Sweden's liberal immigration policy and are gaining entrance without due cause or reason, is labeled a racist. Putting that into this context, as a racist, you believe people of different ethnicity are worth less than you, so it is okay to view you as less than us. This type of reasoning and deflection tactics is what gives us politicians such as this. Skulden ligger i islam. Där har du väldigt mycket, en, en enorm stor förklaring till att det ser ut som det gör. Men det innebär inte att alla människor som föds där är onda. Tvärtom, jag har alltid varit mycket tydlig med att den muslimska världen, menar jag, behöver en, en upplysning. En upplysning, en stålbad som vi har haft i Europa. Och de liberala krafter som finns i den delen av världen behöver definitivt vårt stöd och de behöver vårt erkännande för det finns även där liberala krafter som delar min uppfattning som också tycker att islamiseringen att islamismen är ett problem och det blir ju inte bättre för att man Tack. på något sätt ignorerar och låtsas som att det regnar. Avslut någon replik Magnus Mannhammar. Tack herr Talman. Det här säger mycket om Rikke Jonsson och Sverigedemokraternas politik. Det inlägget han, han har där man drar alla muslimer och islam över en kam. Och det är precis som att alla som huvudtaget skulle ha muslims bakgrund skulle tycka och tänka samma sak. And this also affects people in a similar way. Menar ni på allvar att bara för att jag har åsikter som ni kanske inte delar eller som ni tycker är kränkande därför anser ni att det är rätt att man kastar saker på mig? Du har ju aldrig sagt att det är rätt att kasta saker men fortfarande är ju förståeligt att folk gör så för att folk blir upprörda och det är klart att folk har rätt att bli upprörda. Pöbelmentalitet, pöbelmentalitet är alltså ursäktbar. Jag tror att poängen här är att känslorna kanske är motiverade men att inte sättet att uttrycka dem på är det. Kan du förstå känslorna bakom det här uttrycket? Att jag, för att jag anser att Sverige ska minska Europas mest liberala invandringspolitik det gör alltså att folk ska bli så upprörda av det faktumet att jag vill återgå till en mer normal europeisk nivå det skulle alltså göra att folk har rätt att bli så Kan du förstå den känslan? Nej, det kan jag faktiskt inte. Nej, nej. Du blir utsatt för den. Jag blir ju utsatt. Du blir ju inte. Jag står ju saker.
Det är inte så. Jag känner lika mycket gemensamt med alla som bor över hela jorden. Ja, okay. ja. Du känner lika mycket gemensamt med... Jag känner jävligt med... lite gemensamt med er. Ja, okay. Så alla utav ja. Sverigedemokraterna känner gemenskap med? Ja, kan okay. man säga. The reason why I shut down my Facebook is also that I have been exposed on different pages on social media where people are accusing me for being a racist, a bigot, uh, etc. And uh, when they are confronted about this, mostly from immigrants themselves or uh, people from the Middle East actually, Syria, Turks, uh, they are deleting their uh, posts with, because they are defending me. And they are telling them that Martin is not fucking racist, he's just saying it the way it is. But in uh, the left-wing parties and some feminist groups, I'm considered very racist. To me, this seems like when someone expresses a view that in the minds of these people are contrary to the belief that every human has equal value, it seems justified to treat the dissenter as worth less than them. You can even start to see these sorts of ideas and methods in people's professional life. These are the ethical rules of the Swedish Medical Association. Number seven, stating, The doctor should never deviate from the principle of humans equal value, and never expose a patient to discriminatory medical treatment or treat them discriminately. The reason I'm showing you this is because of this guy. Det har bland annat skrivit att IQ bland de nyinvandrade ligger i nivå med vad som betraktas som lätt förståndshandikappad. Ja. Då undrar jag vad du menar med det. Ja, det är ju det man har som definition i sig. Du tycker inte att det känns ja. rasistiskt? <laughs> jag har bara konstaterat fakta. Det är fakta enligt dig? Det är fakta. Alltså, om, du, om du tittar på de utgivningar som tatuerade och så vidare gjort, så är IQ i Somalia ligger på 70. Och det är, jag bara kommer att säga det, i Sverige betraktas IQ på 70, så är det att förstås att det kappar. Okej, okay. sen skriver du också att majoriteten somalier ägnar sig inte åt annat än att tugga katt och kriminalitet. Ja, alltså, vad håller ni på med? Jag håller ställa frågor till dig. Ja, det är först ett vettlöst. Är det vettlöst? Gå på vanliga privatpersoner på det viset. Du är, du är läkare och enligt Läkarförbundets etiska regler så ska du aldrig frångå, gå, frångå principen om människors lika värde. Tycker du inte att du gör det? Nej, jag tycker inte det. Det tycker du inte? Nej. Så du behandlar somaliska patienter, behandlar du dem likadant som svenska patienter? Självklart. What you saw there was a 61-year-old doctor who was exposed by the Swedish newspaper Aftonbladet after writing what they deemed to be racist comments on sites like Avpixlat, a site which itself has been labeled racist. One of the things Aftonbladet took exception to was a post by the doctor where he stated that the people of Somalia have an average IQ of 70. He cites his sources for this figure to be a man named Tatu Vanenen, a Finnish political scientist and a book called IQ and the Wealth of Nations, which he wrote, published in 2002. Now, I have not read this book myself, so I make no judgments on the book or its content, but it would seem, based on other sources, that the methodology used for many of the figures in this book was questionable and perhaps even faulty. So far, though, the only crime I can see this doctor has committed was to read the wrong kind of book and spread misinformation, presumably because he thought it was accepted fact. But why would I give him that benefit of the doubt? Well, reading the article this video was attached to, there's an interview with a second doctor, age 47, who writes this. I had read about the differences in IQ scores among different populations, and that in Somalia this was around 68. Back then, in 2012, uh, let me just point out here that this article and the interviews with these doctors are from March 5th, 2016, so this exposure comes four years after these comments were even posted on the sites. But let's continue. He says, I embarrassingly thought that these figures were accepted statistics. 
I have since seen many sources where it seems that this was not the case, and that the authors of this book were nationalistically driven. The reporter in the video clip is citing the Swedish Medical Association and the principle of human equal value to shame and label these doctors as racists, simply because they believed the wrong kind of information. Whether that information was, in the end, accurate or not, should not be a factor here. Opinions can change as new information is examined and evaluated. You should not risk losing your job simply because you read the wrong thing and believed it, without being given the chance to examine more accurate information and be allowed the opportunity to change your mind. But this is where we're at in Sweden today. A bus driver employed with the public transportation of Dalarna was suspended from his job. The reason was posting on Facebook where he was strongly critical towards immigration and Sweden's current level of accepting refugees. Despite the fact that, and I quote the article here, the CEO has no information suggesting people from foreign countries traveling on the bus has noticed the driver's attitudes, this man was suspended and investigated because someone has traveled on the bus with this driver, found his Facebook page, and reported it to the company. Here's an interview with Conny Strand, CEO of Dala Trafiken, the bus company in question. Och du hade tydligen sagt att den busschauffören hade gjort inlägg som var olämpliga. Eh, ja, alltså han är ju inte avstängd på livstid utan han är avstängd till så vidare, det är en sak. Mm. Eh, och de uttryck som vi har sett som man har gjort där, de tycker vi är eller inlägg snarare, de tycker vi då är olämpliga. Alltså vi har ett avtal med bussföretaget som säger vad vi ska utmärkas av och det var inte vad han uttryckte. Mm. Vad utmärkte sig de här inläggen av? Ja, du kan väl läsa dem själv, jag behöver ju inte citera dem. Men jag vill höra det men, men... var de invandringskritiska? Ja, det var de. Och, och man får inte vara invandringskritisk och busschaufför i Sverige? Det beror väl på hur man uttrycker sin invandrarkritik. Vi har en policy mm. och vi har det inskrivet i avtalet med bussföretaget mm. om, om vad som ska gälla. Och det, det är de här vanliga uttrycken, du har säkert läst om, mm. överallt. Alltså att alla människor är lika värda. And there it is again. Every human's equal value. As part of company policy and if you're critical towards immigration, you are critical towards immigrants. Which means that you do not see people as being of equal value, so you have gone against company policy, and thus we now have grounds on which to suspend and possibly even fire you for thinking wrong. This is why I feel it is such an important phrase. If you go against it, you're a racist, and everyone knows racists are not of equal value to humans. But hey... Maybe this is just me harping on about something insignificant. Maybe I've just been seeing so much of this phrase lately that my pattern recognizing brain has gone into overdrive and is seeing patterns that aren't actually there. Or maybe I'm right and Sweden is quickly turning into a totalitarian state with thought police and opinion snitches. But at least everyone has an equal value. What do you think? I'd love to hear some other people's opinion on this matter because from my perspective this is fucking scary <laughs>